Greg here from Pixel Fondue. We've got a sweet flashlight animation with a lens flare, and boom, a sweet flashlight animation with a lens flare. Now, I know what you're thinking. What is this, 1995? You're trying to blow out your client's eyeballs to hide all the mistakes in your animation? Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm thinking. So let's see how we can do this. We need After Effects, we need Moto, we need the Moto After Effects IO kit, and we need optical flares from Video Copilot. So let's jump over to Moto and take a peek at our scene. All right, here we are in Moto. I'm gonna break down this scene really quickly, then we'll get back to After Effects. Basically, I'm just using the flashlight mesh that came with Moto. I believe it's in the uh, content directory under household items or meshes household items. And you can load that up. I actually did a little bit of extra modeling on it. I put on this little lens cone here and I broke it up into separate items. I actually rendered the animation in, in Octane for Moto because I like how that looks for this particular thing. But you don't have to do that. You can just load it up, render it in Moto, whatever you want to do. Um, I did add a point light because the point light is actually going to be translated over to After Effects as a point light, which is important for the lens flare plugin, as we'll see later. And I have it all parented to a flashlight master and all with some really awesome animation on it. There's the curves and you can see that, uh, yeah, it's probably one of the top three animations I've ever done. So pretty awesome there, right? But gets the job done, right? So we've got the null, we've got the mesh and we've got the uh, point light. So when we send this over to After Effects, I just wanna make a note. I typically, with my cameras, if I know I'm going to After Effects, I like to have a camera target null in there that the camera is targeting. And I think you get a little better tracking that way. In this particular instance, the camera's not moving and it's really simple animation. Also, I forgot to do it, so <laughs> it's fine. But it's fine though, it works fine, but typically I like to have a, a null in there as well. So to get this over to After Effects, you just select your camera. I'm gonna select my uh, point light right there. And I'm also gonna select my flashlight master null. I don't really need that in the After Effects scene, but I like to have a landmark, so I'm gonna send that over as well. And of course, if I had a camera target in here, I'd, I'd select that as well. And then you just go over to your After Effects IO dropdown. Now, if you don't have this, head over to your Foundry account and log in and go to your product page and, and download it and install it. There's some installation instructions in there. You'll have to put a couple of scripts in the right places. It's really pretty easy to do though. And in fact, I think I have another tutorial where I've done that, so I'll, I'll link to that. But uh, select this and you're gonna add the selected items to an After Effects IO group. And you'll notice over in groups, you've got your After Effects IO group with these three items in it. So these three guys are in that group. That's what's gonna be sent over to After Effects, right? Our camera, our point light, and our flashlight master null, which we don't really need, but it's nice to have a little landmark in there. So then I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna say export to After Effects and it's gonna throw up a file requester. Now you get this warning a lot, right? The frame and film back aspect ratios don't match. That's just default camera in, in Moto. And honestly, I've never had an issue with it and I haven't bothered to go try and troubleshoot this one. So I wish they'd just get rid of this little pop-up because it doesn't seem to really make a bit of difference. But yes, you want to continue. I wish to continue, Moto, thank you. All right, so you're gonna save this JSON file and I'm just saving mine right here, flashlight JSON to my desktop. And it goes pretty quickly. Basically, it's going to bake the transforms of all these guys in world space. So you don't have to worry that that flashlight uh, uh, point light was parented to another item. It just bakes the transforms in world space. So you're good. I'm going to replace that old one there. Now, sometimes it gets the first frame wrong. I have no idea. It's why it's asking my first frame to be two. I want it to be one through 150. Scene scale, I always keep that a default. Um, if you have some issues, maybe you could adjust that, but I have no idea what that does. Export complete. All right, that was fast. So basically it baked all the transforms there. I will say that that one, that was pretty much real time. It did super fast, but if you have, I've done this with like a ton of different nulls and cameras and sometimes it could take a little bit to export and import. Anyway, back to After Effects. So I've imported my footage. This is just a flashlight rendered in Octane actually. And it has an Apple channel. So I put just a black uh, solid behind it. Don't really need to do that, but that's how I have this scene set up. And I'm going to add a new solid to the scene. I'm gonna call that uh, flare. And that's where our lens flare is gonna be. I'm just, let me just hide that right now. And I wanna import my camera and light and null. So I go over to file and I know it's popping off the screen here, but scripts, file scripts, and then you're gonna run the script file. And for, you know, again, <laughs> the default in After Effects, it just goes to the uh, JavaScript file even though there's this JSX bin, JavaScript bin. I wish it, went, I wish it just sort of defaulted to all file formats, but you have to go down here and change it so you can see 
where the uh, After Effects Moto IO uh, script is because it is, it is a uh, JavaScript bin file, not just a JavaScript uh, file type. Um, it should be in your program files Adobe. This is on PC, obviously, After Effects port file scripts. If you're on a Mac, uh, again, you, it's just in your standard scripts directory, so you should be able to find it there. If you don't see it, make sure you switch this to all file formats. Again, it might throw you for a loop there. Select that, hit OK, and it's gonna pop up a requester. Now we want to import from Motos. We wanna find that little JSON file we just spit out a second ago, so I threw that on my desktop. And flashlight JSON, there it is. And there's my three guys, the flashlight master locator, the point white light, and the camera, camera. We're gonna import it to this flashlight composition here. So import. And after a couple seconds, boom, there it is. Now again, if you have, it's a, it's multiple keyframes per frame. It's just baking all the transforms in world space. So if you have a lot of frames, which means a lot of keyframes and a lot of nulls, like you've got 30 lights, it, it may take a while. So be patient. If it's just a few things, it goes really fast. Now I'm already looking through my camera because I have active camera set here. So I'm already looking through my camera. I see my flashlight master kind of right in the middle of the flashlight there where it's supposed to be. And I'm gonna hide that. Again, I just like that as a landmark to make sure everything's looking right. And you can see my uh, flashlight uh, or my point light right there in the middle. There's all those keyframes and it's matching up. So successful export. All right, so let's move along. I'm gonna actually drag my flare solid, black solid to the top and turn that back on. And I'm going to add an effect. And this is the Video Copilot Optical Flares effect. Now, if you don't have it, uh, there's probably a demo. It's a really great plugin. It's only a few hundred bucks, I think. And I would really recommend getting it if you do any work like this. So Video Copilot, Optical Flares. I know it's popping off the screen, but you're just gonna have to trust me, Optical Flares. And there's our default optical flare. Looks uh, like a flare. <laughs> so, you know, that's just rendering on black. I'm gonna turn my black to, there's a couple ways to do this. Like I can change my render node here to on transparent, or I can uh, keep it on black and go over to like screen or add. I tend to like screen. That's just really a preference. But you'll notice it's just a 2D flare right now. It's just a 2D flare. What we want it to do is follow this 3D light automatically because I don't wanna track this flare I don't want to hand animate the flare. I just want it to follow the light. So what I can do is say source type, track lights, and now it disappeared. And you're thinking, eh, it doesn't work. Actually, what's going on here is it's by default, it's using the light's intensity uh, for the flare intensity. It's also using getting the scale of the flare from the light's intensity and using the light's color. All by default, I don't have any of that stuff set up. In fact, I, had, I think I had turned the intensity to zero in Moto because we're not using it. So you just uncheck those. You're gonna to wanna to uncheck them anyway. Now I'm getting blown out a little bit, no problem. I'm just gonna reduce my brightness to about 15%. And there's my flare, right? So not the best flare for flashlights. So I'm gonna find a new one. Um, there's some really great presets that come with optical flares. You could also buy some additional presets for just, again, I don't think it's that much. I uh, bought them years ago. Here's our optical flares user interface. Could use some updating personally, but uh, again, like how can you not like Video Copilot and all those guys over there? They do such a great job. For the After Effects community, I'm not gonna complain. I am going to load up a preset though. So go to my preset browser and let's say go natural flares. And uh, yeah, you could pick a flare out of here. You know, if you're gonna go flares, go big, right? I mean, monster flare. We need the biggest flare possible because that's just what flares are like, right? There we got my monster flare, maybe adjust my scale down a little bit. And uh, yeah, that's like way too much. <laughs> okay, let's try something besides the monster flare actually. I think I, I think I liked my natural flares. I think initially I had, eh, let's do this millennium flare here. I'm gonna hit okay. So this one's a little bit better. It's a little bit big though. So I'm not gonna get into all the aspects of optical flares. Um, I will say that there's just no shortage of control. It just has a vast amount of control. So all of these different, it's basically the flares as stack of elements. So each of these elements can be turned on, turned off, animated, whatever. So if I, if I don't like, I can solo this, just like you could solo a layer in After Effects or hide a layer in After Effects, you can solo or hide layers in uh, the uh, lens flares uh, elements. So for instance, like these stars, I don't really like it, so I'm gonna hide that guy. I'm gonna hide maybe that guy. There's another, you know, solo that guy. I'm probably gonna hide that guy. So I don't like all the, that star shape. 
Uh, my base glow, I maybe want a little bigger so I can, you know, bump that up just a little bit. So it's pretty cool, right? And there's also some procedural animation in here uh, called dynamic triggering. And you can tell if it's on if there's a little red uh, slash there. Dynamic triggering is essentially a procedural sort of animation, which will change lens flare parameters based on where they are on the screen. So if I, let me just uh, preview the trigger here. So you'll see uh, this little red in the center. Let me just change that, go from, from border. And so you see the red of the border. If I, I could just move my flare around here like this. If I go towards the border, you see that flare getting bigger. Because my dynamic triggering, I have the flare uh, scale offset at 55%. So this, the flare scale starts to get bigger as we get towards that red area. So if I want the flare to get bigger towards the edge of the screen, I can say I boom, bump this up to like 150, really something really obvious. And it really like starts to blow out there and you could do it you know in an opposite way as well you can uh, change it back to from center and instead of going to 150 maybe we do like you know negative 25 or something so as it you know gets towards the center it, it, it gets you know scales down a little bit there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do with dynamic triggering you can add additional elements you can just go over here to lens objects and let's say I want to add uh, this ring here I can add that you see it's it's been added there so there's all kinds of stuff you can do with with, with these uh, optical flares. I mean, they're just they're super customizable. There's a bunch of good presets. There's all kinds of animation possibilities. But what's great is you can just add them to your lights. It'll just it'll just grab those lights automatically, and uh, take a look at them. You can also do a couple a couple other things. Let me just really quickly. Now, for instance, if you have something like a spaceship, you may have a ton of lights in there, right? So what do you do to target specific flares to specific lights? So well, you can actually do that. So if I call this point light, we'll just start with the word, uh, the letter A here and hit a space. And then I'm going to duplicate it and I'm gonna start this next one with a, a B, whoops, at the beginning, delete B. Okay, so they're slightly different names. And what I can do is I can target different flares to different lights depending on the name. So I'm actually gonna duplicate this guy and I'm gonna go back to the first one here and under name starts with, I'm going to say A. And so this flare is only going to this light with the A. And I'm just gonna turn that off. And I'm gonna turn on a duplicated one and I'm going to say name starts with B. And then I'm going to change this flare to something else equally garish so it shows up. Let's just go here and say blue spark. And okay, so there's my blue spark. That's only going to light B. And my other one is my sort of warm one is going to light A. So I've got two different flares here. Now, obviously normally you would, you know, if this is a spaceship or something, these lights would be offset. Let me just offset it for this frame. So it's uh, kind of easier to tell what's going on here. Not way down there. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. P for position. Let me just drag this down a little bit. Zero there, okay. Turn this guy back on. So you see I've got two different flares here. Let me just do P for position. Whoops, not the flare of the light. P for position, I'm just gonna sort of offset these guys a little bit. There we go. So you see I've got two different flare layers targeting two different uh, lights in the scene based on their name. So that's a way you can get uh, layer up flares in the same light or you can do you know multiple types of flares on something like a helicopter. It's really pretty powerful. And um, again, they just track automatically. So you're really just exporting your scene, adding your flares, targeting them, your flare layers, tar targeting them to the lights you want. Do some dynamic triggering if you want. And uh, yeah, you're right back in 1995. So congratulations. Yum, yum.